Hi, and welcome back, back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the Bronco Stug 3 Buddy Build with Peter from Peter's Plastics. So as you can see here, um, I've done the uh, painting on the inside. And again, remember, this is not a perfect paint job because remember, it is just to um, give it a little bit of color. So if you see past the commander figures or whatever, um, but the next step was to glue, I'd left off finishing step six. So the next part, yeah, step six. So the next part was seven, which is to glue on some of these photo etch parts, these lifting hooks, glue on this deflector or whatever it is here uh, for the rear end of the vehicle. And then in eight, or and glue the uh, the upper hull portion onto the lower hull, so you look like that. So I've already done. Uh, I decided to glue this on before I did the PE parts. I've sampled one right there. But um, quick note about it: it fits together to a T, as they say. And what I like to do, especially if there's a, a weld seam, you can see there's a weld seam right here. So what I did. That's the only part that's cemented right now. And then I kind of tack cemented those back there. But I like to put the cement in place and then force the pieces together so you get a real nice tight melted together seam. And it's been sitting for a while, so I'll go ahead and pull this off. And as you can see right here, it's just a weld seam. There's no, there's no gaps and you'd be hard pressed to, f to tell me if the weld seam was molded onto the hull or onto the uh, plate. I don't say that bragging, I'm just saying using this technique you can get that together really nicely. So next I'm going to um, put some cement in there on both sides and then in the back then I will cut out the rest of these uh, photo etch hooks. I'll talk a little bit about those and glue them into place, but for now I'm going to go ahead and cement these parts here. While the hole is drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut um, another one of these lifting hooks off. And I'm going to show you real quick, like for those uh, that may have missed some of my earlier videos, how I prep these things. Now, this photo etch is really thick. And that is really nice, especially for a part like this, because um, sometimes these parts will come like mirror image of each other, butted up with a seam down the middle, and you cut it free, prep it, and then you bend it together to form the thickness that you need. Well, this one's already pretty thick to the scale thickness that you need, and I really like that. But all I do is I use this type of blade here, and I cut the uh, attachment point and I don't know if you can see it but it will leave a little whoops a little burr whoops, a little burr on the edge there you can see it a little burr right on that flat edge so what I do is I drop it <laughs> So I use my bending pliers, these happen to be to me a brand and they work for a lot of things and this is one of them. I take the part, I put it on the tip right here, push it to where it's almost uh, where it's almost flush okay basically even as little material as possible then just using a regular sanding stick not a file or anything that little bit of brass that holds it on there is much thinner than the rest of the the photo etch part and this allows you to sand it down 
without using something as aggressive as a file that might catch and bend apart. Now it wouldn't be as big a deal on this because of the way this part is shaped, but this does it just fine. Okay, gets that burr off, and now you're ready to go. So then, now this is just kind of a weird rig right here because I've got that other part drying back here. But what I do is I take my uh, fin, just put a little bit, a little drop on the, my tile there, my cutting tile. Making sure I have the hook oriented properly. In this case, the open part of the hook faces the front of the vehicle. Take the part. I've already test fit it on the other. Let me try and turn this where you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, fits in there perfectly. Really good, really good uh, tight tolerance there. So what I do is I just touch a little bit to the bottom edge, not too much because you don't want it to get all up on the tweezers. Get a little bit on there and then just set it in place. Hold it there for a second and then hopefully, oh whoops, oh. like that all right and voila you have a nice photo etch part in place okay so i'll do the other one you know how i do it now i'll get the clamps off run some more cement underneath the edges here to make sure that's all glued down firmly and uh, then we'll take a look at the next photo etch parts all right here's a quick note um on these pieces here PB8 or like latches or something that go over these channels where the uh, tow cable goes you do not want to assemble those onto the deck until you have the cable in place so that's one of the last things that a person should do so I'm pretty much done with eight for now so the next part will be step nine, which is assembling the up for the uh, casemate or whatever you call it, the upper part of the upper hull. So I'm gonna start cutting these parts out, getting those prepped. <clears throat> As you can see, I have uh, most of this fighting compartment uh, assembled. Uh, the hatch here and then this uh, metal cover plate here are in place as well as the these side bulges. Uh, I guess these were um, put on here for radios uh, to give more room for radios if it was a command tank or something. But anyway, those are on there. This back plate was on here. Now when I glued this back plate on, what I did is I just tacked it a little bit. And then I put it on here to see exactly where it was going to fit to make sure it fit properly and uh, in the back. And it does, so we're all good there. So the next part is to Lottie Lottie. Oh, and one thing you may notice, <gasps> where's the gun? Oh my word, this top has been glued on and the gun's not on there. You will be happy to know that it actually will come off quite easily. So I could have done that separately, but anyway, there it is. So that's in place. That looks good. Um, this part's done. Now, I'm assembling this part here, which is the uh, front part of the gun. The main gun and all this fit together really well no problems now here is the kit parts you have the brass barrel 
that comes with the kit and you have the plastic barrel. Now the plastic barrel is not bad and I would use it except for this. Now first let me say this, why would I use the plastic barrel over the metal barrel? Well since it's slide molded it's very nicely molded and the fact that whenever it gets cemented together um, it will just stick a lot better. Uh, in using super glue for stuff like this sometimes you know if it doesn't I don't know sometimes it can break off I mean, super glue is good but sometimes it it can come off somewhat easily if you were to bump it or something like that so what where I can if the parts are decent I will use the styrene parts and I would in this case except for this as you can see, at the end of the barrel here, it has some really groovy rifling, but it's super shallow. So even if you paint that thing up, you're going to see that plug in the inside. Hopefully you can see that. It's not very deep. Now, I could drill it out, but then that would screw up the rifling, and thereby um, messing up any desire to use this barrel. Now something else to note, and I don't know if you can see it on here, but there are grooves here, 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 and here that kind of crisscross the outside edge of the barrel, so that would have to be sanded off. And to my eye, and I could be wrong, but it looks, the scale thickness looks a bit too thick from the outside of the barrel to the inside of the bore. So, you know, it would, it would work, but since I have the metal barrel, I'll use the metal barrel. However, Again, like I say, uh, when you have parts like this, now granted this would probably be pretty secure just because uh, it's got a pretty good, not only do you have this pin part of the barrel that um, goes in there, but also the metal outside sleeve that would cement on, or that would... Uh, attach like that so it'll give you a pretty good pretty good deal but what I'm going to do since this part here is perfectly fine and seamless I'm going to use the metal barrel now it is pretty thick so maybe it is the scale thing is okay but I'm, I'm not worried about the rifling it's I'd rather have a nice good uh, bore than rifling and a plug in the middle but I'm gonna use this barrel and I'm gonna use this because I can cement that and get a nice strong fitting connection point without having to worry about it breaking off because this being super glued inside um, it will have this for structural rigidity okay hopefully I explain that in a way that makes sense but that is my plan so you're not stuck with just using one or the other you can mix them up so that's just some food for thought there for anybody that uh, that might be building a kit like this and run into this situation you'll get the nice metal barrel but you also get a nice solid connection because of the PVC or PVC um, to me an extra thin welding the plastic parts together so I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on these and come back and here it is looks really good and I have a really really good connection here between the uh, the, the uh, plastic parts so that'll make it nice and solid not that you know people are gonna bang it around or anything like that but I like to play it safe when I can the next whoops the next step after getting all this assembled um, quick note this part right here I'm gonna wait till after I have the whole fighting compartment completed then I'll attach that so I don't accidentally knock it off the next part is the uh, the rangefinder which I'm not installing because I have that hatch closed so that will be going in the parts box now next is uh, this front plate here and I've got it removed from the sprue however there are some pretty gnarly and pronounced ejector pin marks here. Uh, I mean, that one right there is 
almost is sticking out almost as far as the thickness of this plate so I'm gonna have to shave that off so uh, keep an eye on that if you are building this kit keep an eye peeled and for those who might be interested what I normally do in a case like this and again I'm not showing anybody I don't think anything they don't know already but for the beginner people if you're watching and you've never run into this problem I just take one of these type of blades I like these because they're pretty safe because you can really cut away from yourself and they're sharp and it's easy to shave it off and you can really get it flat without having to do a lot of sanding or anything weird like that so just a quick demonstration there for you whoops getting off the screen there since this is the back if you gouge it up make it look ugly it's no big deal because the way this thing is is this bottom edge is below the level of the uh, it's it's a weld seam so it'll be below where you can't see it and that one right there was the worst so I'm gonna assume that'll be just the same on another kit so I'm gonna shave all those off get it all sanded smooth something else to look for when gluing this plate on you need to make sure that it's you know obviously aligned all the way around really well but also you want to make sure there's a weld seam there's a weld right here that should line up with this raised portion here so as you're putting this together you want to make sure that you're kind of test fitting stuff as you go make sure that's fitting down in there right to where that weld lines up with uh, with that with this raised portion right here you want to make it make sure it's lined up as, as good as you can get it without leaving a gap on the top so just something else to uh, something else to look for after getting this part uh, cemented in place like I mentioned in the previous segment after removing the ejector pin marks moved on got the headlight covers and the toe point brackets towing brackets whatever you want to call them got those in place all that fit together perfectly no problems and then uh, Put the fighting compartment in place and then installed the main gun so here's where it looks like right now everything fit together fine no problems these parts right here all interlocked I mean until you put them together you really won't know what I'm talking about but they all interlock together as they're supposed to these right here are separate pieces that glue on the front of this and they have uh, notched grooves they have notches that fit on to these ribs on the toe points and they fit like a glove no problem uh, the gun fit fine it is with the metal barrel it is a little nose heavy so I'm probably gonna have to tack that with some cement just to keep it in place I'm almost assuredly gonna have to do that because it is heavy in the front but no big deal so it all fit together nicely nice clean seams all along the sides everything lined up in the back um, I just really know there's a ever so slight gap right there but I'm not really gonna worry about it I may try and put a little more cement in there and see if it'll kind of fill it in but other than that nothing really to speak of so with the completion of step 12 I think I'll call this video quit so it doesn't get too long so up to this point everything's been great um, just 
you know take note of the uh, recommendations I made again there's always you know other ways of doing things and you know somebody might come up with another solution or a better solution but my my tips and hints worked in this case and it all went together nicely so I'll end with step 12 next time we'll come back uh, I'll start with 13 applying some of the photo etch to the back and uh, move on from there so that's it for this segment of the Bronco Sturm 3 I'm sorry Stug 3 buddy build with Peter of Peter's Plastics so keep an eye out soon for another video whereupon we will move on so anyway thanks for watching any tips questions comments put them in the comments below and I will see you all next time